President Donald Trump has made new pro-life promises, including to fully defund Planned Parenthood if re-elected in a letter to pro-life leaders last week. In the letter, Trump highlighted his presidential pro-life accomplishments, ranging from implementing the Protect Life rule to nominating Justices Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. He also made new pro-life promises, saying if re-elected, he would work with pro-life leaders to fill the Supreme Court and lower courts with judges who will respect the Constitution. Signed into law, the Paying Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, the No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act, and the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. And finally, Trump vowed to fully defund the big abortion industry, such as Planned Parenthood, of tax dollars. Some of these pro-life promises are repeated from a letter to pro-life leaders Trump released in the previous campaign. In 2016, Trump also promised to defund Planned Parenthood and sign the Paying Capable Bill into law if elected president. Ali Pardo is the Deputy Communications Director for the Trump campaign. Ali, welcome to the show. Tell us, how did this new letter to pro-life leaders come about? Hey, thanks so much for having me. Well, the president wanted to reiterate his support for the issues and values that we all care about so much. He wanted to make sure people heard and, and looked at his record and, and looked at what exactly he's been able to do over the last four years. This is the most pro-life president in history. He has fought continuously to make sure that the onborn is taken care of and that our values are represented in the White House. Would President Trump consider fully defunding Planned Parenthood by executive order in this current term? Why wait until he's reelected? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a question for the president. I can't ever get ahead of the president. But what I can tell you is when you contrast what the president has done with what Joe Biden is saying he will do, you're talking about the extreme abortion until birth Democrat Party that is just so out of step, not only with the Catholic community, but with Americans all across the country. President Trump wrote a letter to pro-life leaders in the 2016 campaign and made pro-life commitments. Some are the same in this letter, such as signing the pain capable bill into law. What is the Trump campaign's message to pro-lifers who are not confident the president will fully follow through on these commitments if re-elected? This is the promises made, promises kept, President. He has delivered time and time again. Like I said, he is the most pro-life president in history. He has shown his support on this issue, shared our values, and shown that this is something that he's never going to just push to the side. You can tell by the judges he's put on the bench, the over 300 judges that he has put on the lower and upper courts, including the Supreme Court. This is a president who is committed to this issue. I don't I honestly don't know much more you can ask for. I mean, he has delivered for my community, for the Catholic community, and for all of us. And that's something that we really, really should look for four more years of, especially, like I said, when you contrast it with where Joe Biden is on this key issue. Looking ahead, how much does President Trump plan to emphasize his pro-life position at the upcoming presidential debates against Joe Biden? I mean, I think he's going to lay out a clear contrast. And in that letter that you're referencing, he asked us to help him lay out that clear contrast. When you contrast his record of, of being a pro-life president and that of Joe Biden, who's sitting here talking about abortion until birth, talking about infanticide, when you're talking about the born alive bill that you just mentioned, where Democrats are supportive of letting a baby die that's born alive, that is aborted. I mean, these are atrocious policy positions that the Democrats want to make a reality and that our president has stood strongly against. President Trump says he will nominate judges who respect the Constitution and do not legislate an abortion agenda from the bench. Does the campaign foresee the Supreme Court being a significant issue to voters this year? Back in the 2016 election, there was an empty seat at the Supreme Court. Well, in, in 2016, I think we had an empty seat, and that is what made it um, a top, if not the top issue for a lot of voters across the country. But what you're seeing here is that people should pay attention because the next Supreme Court justice could decide the direction of, of our future, of our court, and of a lot of these key issues and key decisions that we're looking to be readdressed. So I think that this seat is just as important as the Kavanaugh seat, just as important as the Gorsuch seat. This next seat could decide the future for, for many people. Finally, Ali, what is the Trump campaign's message to the pro-life movement today? Uh, our message is the president stands with you. He stands with us. 
like I've said, I'm broken record, he is the most pro-life president in history. He will continue to be that president. He will continue to put our values and the values in protecting the life of the unborn to be one of his top priorities. He has shown us that. And I think actions speak louder than words. This is the president who has not only said it, but who has done it. Ali Pardo with the Trump campaign, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having me. Joining us now via Skype for pro-life analysis is Marilyn Musgrave. She is a former U.S. representative for the state of Colorado and today is the vice president of government affairs for the Susan B. Anthony List. Congresswoman, welcome back to the show. Trump released a similar letter to pro-life leaders during the 2016 campaign. How does President Trump in 2020 compare to then-candidate Trump in 2016 on the life issue? Well, first of all, he really made history in 2016 when he gave a written commitment to pro-life Americans. It was absolutely amazing. And here we have a recommitment at this point. Uh, what is so great about this is he made promises in 2016, and he's kept those promises. He's worked very hard to end taxpayer funding of abortion here and abroad. He's worked very hard to end funding for big abortion industry led by Planned Parenthood. Uh, he's done an amazing job of setting a pro-life example for state legislators around the country to follow. Uh, in fact, during these four years, more pro-life laws have been passed in state legislatures than in any other time since Roe v. Wade. And then he's protected conscience rights of pro-life Americans, and he's also changed the federal bench. I mean, more than 200 uh, outstanding judges, constitutionalists, have been put on the federal courts. It's just amazing what this president has accomplished. Looking back on the 2016 pro-life commitments, not every commitment has been fulfilled yet. And some of those commitments have been repeated in this new letter, including the commitment to sign the Pain Capable Bill into law and to defund Planned Parenthood. Congresswoman, is it more likely President Trump will accomplish these goals in a second term if they could not be accomplished in a first term? Well, having been uh, in Congress, I can tell you that Congress can do a lot of good. Uh, Congress can create a lot of ill. And uh, this president has faced challenges uh, from the Pelosi-led House. Uh, he's faced uh, challenges from Leader Schumer in the United States Senate. But we know that this president uh, will use every uh, constitutional effort he can to promote life. He's done a great job with administrative action, especially with uh, Health and Human Services Director uh, Azar. So he's worked very hard. And when we look at the situation, we see that the Unborn Child Pain Capable Act has been passed in 21 states. And when you poll on uh, assisting babies that have survived a failed abortion, it pulls at 77 percent support. So this president has faced unparalleled obstructionists, uh, but we see the extremism of the other side, especially when we look at how people around the country respond to Unborn Child, unborn child Pain Capable Act and uh, giving medical assistance to those infants that survive a failed abortion. So life is winning in America under this president. As a former member of Congress yourself, how many pro-life goals are all contingent on Congress? And if we have a pro-abortion majority in Congress, what can a president do to still make pro-life advances? Well, first of all, we need to remember that this president uh, is very strong in his pro-life commitments. He will not give in. He's won concessions uh, with leaders Pelosi and Schumer in negotiations. Uh, he has done everything he can now. We know that it would be uh, a terrible defeat if we lost the pro-life majority in the Senate. We're hopeful that we can have a pro-life majority in the House of Representatives. But at a minimum, we must reelect this president and we must maintain our pro-life majority in the Senate and again, work very hard to elect uh, pro-life individuals in the House. Uh, this election, and our ground game is giving this message to voters, this election is literally a matter of life and death. 
we must reelect this president and maintain our majority in the Senate and work very hard to have it in the House of Representatives so that these bills can pass and be signed into law. Marilyn Musgrave with the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you for your time. Very good to be with you, Catherine.